Associate Professor of English at USC. She is the author of the story, short story collections in the Not Quite Dark and Break Any Woman Down, and the novel Elsewhere, California. Her work has appeared in the Paris Review, Kaleo, and oh, oh, Iowa Review, and many other publications. She is on the advisory board of Angel's Flight Literary West. So glad to be here reading with all these amazing writers. Um, so I'm just going to read two pages from a story that was published in Ziziva's January issue, and it's a fictional account of my time as a grad student in Bloomington, Indiana, and. Um, I guess some things you need to know is that my character, Rebecca, uh, because she didn't get summer teaching, she's got to work and she gets a temp job uh, through manpower. And it's cleaning cable boxes um, in this, uh, just like a little town outside of Bloomington where everyone who works there are like local poor white folks and she's the only one who's working with these people cleaning cable boxes. I actually had that job cleaning cable boxes. Um, and one of the guys she works with is a guy named Claudius who has a tracheotomy. And one detail that comes up later in this story is that the first time she drops him home because she starts giving him rides because he lives so far and he walks to and from work, she notices that he has Confederate flags for curtains in his trailer. Um, so. Uh, on the 4th of July, on a Sunday, I wasn't working because it was the weekend and a holiday, but I'd already been cleaning cable boxes for a month. None of my friends were around, so I spent 4th of July alone. In the Midwest, the 4th really feels like something. Flags and stars all over the place, in people's yards, bursting out of Publix and the Dollar General like confetti. On my apartment door above a diner, I hammered glittery stars, red, white, and blue. Because of family barbecues and cookouts, I associate Kentucky Fried Chicken with the 4th of July. <laughs> and so I had a homesick feeling for a three-piece with coleslaw, though I hadn't had it in years. I was in the drive through my car rocking and rumbling so loud that the person on the other side of the speaker could barely take my order when I heard something on the radio about a multi-state manhunt. A white supremacist, some nut job named Benjamin Smith, was shooting Asians, Jews, and blacks. This had been going on all Independence Day weekend. This guy had already murdered three people. But now he was in Bloomington and had just murdered a grad student outside a Korean church. The reporter continued in her flat, emotionalist voice. FBI sources said a preliminary description of the driver as a clean cut, six foot weighing 135 pounds with a tattoo on his chest saying, Sabbath breaker. Now with nearly 20 years between me and that moment, I can reason that the chances of me crossing paths in all of Bloomington with someone who was shooting random targets were slim. But then again, it wasn't so random because folks who looked like me weren't the majority. I can remember and feel that target on my forehead, on the back of my head, on my heart, burning first like a cigarette placed on a wound and then spreading into a big black hole that covered me up like a shroud. I was sitting in a drive through waiting on fried chicken, thinking I was in the most stereotypical place a black person could be, making it easy for this crazy racist to kill me. And all of a sudden I could feel, and all of a sudden I could be internal blackness, like the boy leaving church on a Sunday. I left KFC, hands shaking, fighting the urge to duck as I drove. When I got home, I turned on the news, courtesy of the kid next door, an engineering student who grew mushrooms I was too afraid to try, and who jerry-rigged our cable, so we both got it for free. <laughs> The chicken was greasier than I remember, with chewy, stretchy skin, but I shoveled it in and the coleslaw in my mouth, wishing I had booze. 
wishing it wasn't Sunday because Indiana was a dry state on Sundays. Then I remembered I couldn't leave my apartment anyway. There was a killer loose. I watched the news until dark, until they caught him, until he placed the gun under his chin and killed himself in Salem, Illinois. Two others were dead, nine wounded. In the middle of the night, I tossed and turned, not feeling right, until finally I threw up my chicken and coleslaw. The next day at work, I don't know what I expected. I didn't really know anyone but Claudius, even after a month. I only knew faces. But I looked at people a little longer, waiting for them to stare back and say something like, what about that guy, huh, awful. At the end of our shift, driving Claudius home, I asked, wasn't that crazy, that guy shooting at people? I didn't say the killer was a white supremacist, those curtains in Claudius' trailer. I didn't know what those meant and me giving him rides now. But Claudius just shook his head. What guy, he said. I ain't heard nothing about it. Thank you.